In this chapter, we're going to look at the parts of Zeta which control the sound created by the oscillators and shaped by the filters. Let's start with the schematic diagram again. The three control devices are the envelope generator, low frequency oscillator, and modulation matrix. The way sound behaves over time is called its envelope. Envelopes let you control how a sound starts, what happens while the key is held, and what happens when you let go. These stages are called attack, decay, sustain, and release, or ADSR. Now Zeta adds a fifth dimension, delay, which is how long Zeta waits after you press a key before it even begins making sound at all. The most common thing to control with an envelope is the volume, or amplitude, of a sound. A sound with a long attack on its amplitude envelope will fade in. And one with a long delay will fade out. But you can also have a pitch envelope that makes the tuning of a sound change over time. Then Zeta lets you set up six other user-defined envelopes, and you can map these to almost any parameter using the modulation matrix. So if I wanted to create a filter sweep, where the cutoff frequency slowly swoops open, I could set up user envelope number two with a really long attack, then come down here to the modulation matrix and connect EG2 as the source, to the destination, Filters, and select All Filters Cutoff, like this. You basically have one envelope available for each of your six oscillators, plus a master envelope for pitch and a master envelope for amplitude. You can adjust the envelope segments using the knobs at the bottom of the window, or just click and drag the nodes around up above. You can also select between three different curve types to connect the dots. There are linear curves, a fast curve, and a slow curve. And obviously you can do this by clicking the curve type window, or you can click on the line segment itself. And the amount fader just determines how strongly that envelope will affect its target. The next controller is the low frequency oscillator, or LFO. LFOs are probably the most misunderstood component in any synthesizer. Now we associate the word oscillator with sound generation. So the name LFO implies that this is used to produce massive bass sounds, but it's not. It's used to produce a relatively slow or low frequency timing signal to control other parts of the synth. It has many of the same controls as the sound generating oscillator, but the waveforms produced by an LFO are hundreds or thousands of times slower than what comes out of the main oscillators. Here again, there are six available LFOs. Numbers one through four affect all the voices in a program, and five and six are assignable. And just like with the envelope generator, you're going to pick out what the LFO controls using the modulation matrix. There are 60 waveforms in the LFO library and all of them can be synchronized to the host tempo for really cool rhythmic effects. So if I wanted to make the stereo pan sweep back and forth smoothly, I could set up a basic sine wave in LFO1, then go to the modulation matrix and pick LFO1 as the source, and connect it to stereo pan as the destination. You can even design your own LFO waveform with any 16-bit PCM file. Just save the PCM file into the wavetables folder and it'll be available to the LFO. We've already seen the modulation matrix in action several times. Its job is to connect a modulation source to a destination. Now this device actually has a lot in common with the patch panel of an old modular synth. And if you really want to get to know the modulation matrix well, Go to the user guide, look on pages 36 and 37. They have several exercises there that'll help you set up some very complex routings.
The most basic way to use the modulation matrix is to connect a source to a destination. Now you'll have to increase the range to get it to do anything, but you don't need to use the curve and control columns right away. The curve column lets you modify the signal coming from the source before it reaches the destination. For example, if I wanted to use LFO1 to modulate cutoff and resonance, but I didn't want them locked exactly together, I could set up the routing then add a slightly different curve to each of those. This way the timing will come from LFO1, but it'll be adjusted slightly before reaching its destination. The control column lets you map any of these modulations to your MIDI hardware controller. So if I set the control column to mod wheel, then the mod wheel on my keyboard can be used to dial in the modulation effect when I'm playing live. And don't forget that you can click on the 9 through 16 button and call up a second bank of routing options. The last section we need to look at is the arpeggiator. Now it lives down here on the matrix tab, but it's really a device all its own. An arpeggiator is a type of sequencer that generates notes in a looping pattern. The most important control is the pattern selection. Now you can load the standard up and down type patterns or you can pick from over 300 MIDI arpeggios, or you can even load your own MIDI files. To see how this works, let's load up a really basic sound. Then we'll turn on the ARP, and we'll grab one of the MIDI patterns. Voila, instant rhythm. You can sync the ARP to the host program here. And you can also set how many octaves you want to include in the pattern. The mode control has three settings. In sync mode, new notes that are played roll right in with the existing pattern without missing a beat. In free mode, each new note starts the pattern from scratch whenever you press it, so you get more random effects. And in the gate mode, the ARP generates on and off signals that you can use as controllers elsewhere in Zeta. And if you turn on the sort control, the ARP will play back the notes exactly in the order that you press them. Down below you have controls for humanize and groove, which you can use to add swing and to throw in a little randomization to keep things from getting too mechanical. Finally, you have faders for speed and velocity, which are pretty self-explanatory, and a length fader. The length fader simply determines how long the ARP triggers each note. Okay, let's move on to the next chapter and begin looking at effects.